This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Soumya, the Chief of Internet Study in RCOG. Okay, so today we are here to discuss the most important aspect of genetics, that is the inheritance. Okay, so today in a short time, I will take you through how to answer your questions in the exams, as well as to understand the simple concepts. I have tried to simplify these concepts. Okay, so to start with, this is a small effort from Sadi Masuji to make your life easier, definitely to understand the concepts. Just remember in the exams to have a solidifying concepts, your concepts should be very much solidified. So it helps you to perform better in the exams for sure. <clears throat> okay, so, so let's start with our, uh, the reason why we are here about the inheritance in itself. Okay. So, as a candidate, you will always be confused about what each in uh, what do you mean by autosomal and uh, sexual recessive, as well as the conditions which causes and how do you have to tell the risk depending upon the family member affected for the woman who is coming into you. Okay. So, to understand this, let's start with the basic concepts of homozygous versus heterozygous. Why do you need to know this is to understand dominant and the recessive pattern of inheritance. This is a very basic concept. If you understand this, half of your job is done. And also I would want to tell you that the images I have taken from various sources, they are all copyrighted and I'm using here only for the purpose of education. Tiriyama Sivji doesn't hold any credit or any copyright of these images. Okay, so let's start with what is what do you mean by homozygous and heterozygous? Okay. Basically, homozygous means a particular gene is present in both the cystic chromatids. Okay, so that is uh, being called as homozygous. Heterozygous is different alleles of genes. Okay, as you can see here, this is a homozygous B, B, capital B and capital B, small b and small b. This is homozygous. They both the cystic chromatids carry the same thing. Here also small b in one cystic chromatid, another small b in another cystic chromatid. Here you can see heterozygous, one capital B and one small b, one small b and one capital B. They are not the same alleles of the gene. If you ask me why do you have to understand, for example, for autosomal dominant or X-link dominant, any of the dominant diseases, even if they are heterozygous, that means in this case, if B is a dominant gene, so the patient who present, who present with this genotype, they will present with the disease. That means to say, if they have BB and B is a dominant gene, the patient who carries will present disease even though the other gene is normal, okay? This is autosomal dominant. But at the same time, B is recessive, okay? So the other gene also needs to be B for a patient to present with symptoms. This is called homozygous. In other words, the recessive person to present a disease, they need to be homozygous. That means they have to carry the default gene in both the cystic chromatids. Okay? For example, if an autosomal recessive person carries a default gene one in one of the cystic chromatids and normal gene in the other, they, uh, they don't present the disease, but they can be carriers. Okay, so this is the important concept about homozygous versus heterozygous. Okay, I hope you are clear. Let me uh, take a quick recap. Uh, recap. Homozygous means both the defective genes are there and this needs to be there for an autosomal recessive condition to be present as a disease. Okay, at the same time, if that gene is recessive and the other gene is normal, so then they can present as carrier. They can still be present as normal, but they still carry one more uh, normal gene, so they are carriers. But in autosomal dominant, once that dominant gene is there, irrespective of anything, the patient would present as disease, okay? So that is about homozygous and, homozygous and heterozygous. Let's see when we see in each of the conditions how we do the present. Now, let's take it. Uh, first one is autosomal dominant, okay? What is autosomal dominant inheritance? Remember, Autosomal has, it affects both the sexes equally, okay? Unlike the X-linked, which we will talk in a while. Autosomal, males and females are affected in equal numbers, okay? Both of the sex can transmit. That means affected father can transmit the gene, or if the mother is affected, she can transmit the gene. In the example given here, 
So I would want to take your focus on this. You can see here the father is affected and affect, it has affected two children. Okay, both boys and girls are equally affected. I'll show you another example of how to calculate this and what does this mean? Okay, so a gene is dominant if it is expressed when heterozygous, as I mentioned about B and B, right? You remember, right? So B and B, if this is a dominant gene, even though it is heterozygous, they will present as disease, okay? And an affected individual has a 50% of chance having an affected child. Here you can see this person can give 50% of the kid the same disease, okay? They can be either mother or the father, okay? And remember, dominant, the dominant gene will not skip generation. Every generation, one or two persons will be affected. There is no skipping of generations, okay? So let me see how actually I uh, take you guys through a presentation in itself to calculate the disease, okay? So to calculate an autosomal dominant, okay? So let's draw this, okay? So we will take this A dash as a dominant gene, that is one parent and AB is a third parent, okay? In either of this, this is a dominant gene, okay? So when you have to calculate, you have to calculate like A dash A, okay? And the second would be A dash B, the permutation combinations, okay? The third thing would be B A and B B. Okay, so we are here talking about autosomal dominant. Okay, so here you can see wherever this A dash gene is there, you can see this child has got A dash A and this child has got A dash B. The other two are normal. Okay, so if you actually look into this pattern, so how many kids are affected? 50% of the children would be affected and the other 50% would be normal. So this is about the autosomal dominant one. Okay, so that is what we have shown here. If you can see in this diagram, if you can see in this diagram, see this 50% of the children are affected and other 50% are not. So whenever you have been given a disease, for example, they will give you achondroplasia. Okay, for example, achondroplasia, a father is affected, what is the chance of children having the disease? So it is 50%. Okay, so I hope I'm clear about this autosomal dominant inheritance. Don't worry, we will do a couple of examples afterwards so that you will understand what I'm talking about. Okay. So, next, this is again very important point. This is a very important slide again. There are so many mnemonics. You can remember a few of them. So, for autosomal dominant disorder, very powerful, very powerful also you can remember are very powerful dominant human. Here, the most important ones you have to remember, dystrophia myotonica, osteogenesis imperfecta, Marfan syndrome and men's syndrome, neurofibromatosis, achondroplasia and adult uh, polycystic kidney disease, tuberous sclerosis, Huntington's disease, okay, so, and HNPCC. So why you have to remember this is, sometimes they can give you all of the following are autosomal dominant except, okay, for that you need to know this condition, okay. Again, the similar example of autosomal dominant inheritance. You can see here, as we said, actually, as we calculated, if an affected parent is there, 50% of the children to be affected and 50% would be not. So let's see how it is done here. The father is affected. Okay, so you can see the 50% of the children are affected, 50% are normal. Okay, so this is about autosomal dominant. Let's move to autosomal recessive. Again, I just want to remind you guys about autosomal recessive. Remember, for autosomal recessive disease to be present, they should have homozygous genes. That means to have, they need to have two defective genes. Okay, they have to have two defective genes. Okay, then only they will present as disease. If they have one normal gene, then they will be carriers. Okay, so let's see about autosomal recessive. Remember, because autosomal recessive, there is a possibility that they can be a carriers. They can skip the generations. You can see here in this pedigree, this family is affected, but intermediate two families are skipped. And again, the third generation, first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation. You can see first and fourth are affected, second and third are skipped. This is possible in case of autosomal recessive. 
and also just remember that they are usually um, they present very early in life and they are mostly very uh, actually severe disease if they present and majority of them are inborn error of metabolism okay so you need to be aware of that but there is an ex exception which i will be talking when we get there okay so this is something which is important which you guys need to know so it is homozygous uh, actually often complete penetrance the onset is usually early in life and include mostly all inborn errors of metabolism and they can skip the generation and remember to present as disease they should be homozygous okay if they are heterozygous they will be catalysts okay let's look at some of the examples of autosomal recessive you can again you can remember whichever the mnemonic you like you, one of that is m a b c d e f g h you can see cystic fibrosis very very common caucasians 1 in 25 Uh, so you have to remember this: beta thalassemia, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, galactosemia, glycogen storage disorder, homocystinemia, and the Friedreich ataxia. So you can remember whichever way you want, but just remember again: they can ask all of them are autosomal dominant, except okay, for that you need to know. Again, the autosomal recessive pattern. Again, we can actually we will just see how to write this pedigree. So. Life easier, okay. Okay, so now let's take a new slide. Okay, let's take a new slide and draw autosomal recessive. I write a couple of uh, permutation and combination. Okay, autosomal recessive. Let's take first both the parents are carriers. Okay, let's take uh, both the parents are carriers. That is A dash B, and then A dash B. This means to say they are carriers. Okay, so what will happen to the children? They can commonly come like both the parents are uh, carriers of cystic fibrosis. What is their chance of having an affected child, unaffected child? So we can calculate from this. Let's see what can happen. Okay, so it can be a dash a dash. Okay, then it can be a dash b. Then it can be it can be b e dash the last one can be b b okay so here you can see as we know we are talking about autosomal recessive okay so how many children are affected for affected children they should carry this defective gene on both the cystic chromatid so you can see a dash a dash so out of Four children, one in four will be affected. That is, twenty-five percent will be affected. We can see B B. They don't carry any carriers or any genes, defective genes. So one by four, that is twenty-five percent will be normal. Half of them, because they carry a single gene on defective gene on them, so they will be half will be carriers. Okay. So hope I am clear. So when both the parents are carriers. Okay, both the parents are carriers. There is a possibility that one fourth of the children are affected. One fourth of the that is twenty five percent of the children are affected. Twenty five percent of the children are normal. Fifty percent will be carriers. Okay, so now let's take another example <clears throat> where okay again autosomal recessive. We will take one person is affected. Okay, other child, other parent is normal. Okay. So what are the possibilities they can have? Okay, I'm writing the these examples because this will help you to understand and solve the questions easily in exam. Okay, see this? It can be. What are the permutation combination? A dash A. Okay. The second thing is A dash B. Okay. The third thing is okay B dash A. Okay. The fourth thing would be B dash B. Okay, you can see if the parent is completely affected and the mother are okay, the other parent is normal. One parent is completely affected, the other parent is normal. So you can see all the children can be carriers. Okay, all of them can be carriers. Okay, this is one such example. Let's take the other one. Okay, the other one being okay. Again, we are talking about autosomal recessive. Why we have a lot of things in autosomal recessive is because some of the parents can be affected, some of them can be carrier, 
that's why we need to understand that permutation combination. Let's take here one of the parent is affected, the other one is carrier. Okay. Why you need to know this is because when the woman comes, you might have to talk about the cumulative probability. Okay. That we will see when we sort out few questions. You can see here what are the permutation combination which can happen here. Okay. So you guys know how to calculate now permutation combination. Okay, so you can see here if a parent is one of the parent is affected, the other parent is carrier, none of the kids will be normal. Okay, so fifth, like half of the like sorry, one fourth will be affected, and rest of all the children that is three out of four will be carriers. Okay, so this is one such example. Okay, so if it depends on if they give you a scenario of autosomal recessive condition, they would always give you cystic fibrosis or they can give you hemophilia. So you should know the recessive pattern or the inheritance pattern and then calculate this accordingly depending upon the scenario given to you. But let's get back to our initial presentation of what is happening here. Here what is happening? <clears throat> here you can see dad is a carrier, mom is a carrier. Okay, so we have sorted out this if dad is a carrier and mom is a carrier, right? So what can happen? How many kids can get affected? How many kids can be normal? And how many kids can be carriers? Okay, so here you can see the same thing. Child has a condition. That is, this is the one that is one fourth of a child has a condition. 75% okay, of children don't have the condition. That doesn't mean that they are not carriers. Okay. The person who is not a carrier but completely free of that condition is this person. That is one by four. And the carriers is the middle ones, that is these two kids. Okay. So one fourth will be affected, one fourth will be normal, and half of them would be carriers. Okay. So this is how the calculation goes in. So you need to know this because this is important from the clinical point of view because you need to explain to the woman. Now, let's take a quick look at what is the difference between dominant and recessive. Again, because it is autosomal, it is being carried by autosomes, not the six chromosomes. So the main and men and women are equally affected. And in autosomal dominant, because it is dominant, how much ever even one gene is there, they, they are going to actually uh, inherit the condition. They cannot skip generation, but recessive because they can be carrier, they can skip generations. Okay. Remember, if a child is coming to you with autosomal dominant disease, invariably their parents need to be affected with disease. Unlike autosomal recessive, if a child has a disease, you need not think that the parents have disease, they could be carriers. Okay, so that is the difference between dominant and <coughs> recessive. Okay. Now let's move to the most common one, X-linked recessive. Remember, X-linked recessive means the gene, one of the genes is defective. What happens in females is because we have one more X normal chromosome, and this is if it is X-linked recessive, they will be only carriers. Okay, in case of X-linked recessive condition, because there is one more normal X chromosome, they will be this girl, whoever is affected will be carrier. But if it is a dominant disease, then definitely the females will be affected because in dominant, they don't care about the other X chromosome. Now let's talk about the X-linked recessive. So we know that X-linked recessive, the other X is normal. So that is why they could be, they need not present as disease. They can be just a carrier. And males are affected exclusively. Why? Because they have only one X chromosome. And if they get the defective X, automatically they will be affected. Okay. Unlike girls where they have a normal X chromosome. Okay. So, and remember, men, females, this is a very important concept because when you calculate, it is very important to understand this. So, let me go to that chart again to make you to understand. Okay, so just remember in X-linked recessive, okay, X-linked recessive, if a mother uh, has a disease and father is normal, okay, this mother can give the disease to the children. Okay. Let's see the permutation combination, then I'll be able to explain better. 
Okay, what are the permutation combination can happen? X dash X. Okay. The next thing would be X dash Y. Okay. And the next thing would be X X. Okay. The other thing would be X Y. Okay. So here you can see yeah, overall carrying the defective gene, one girl and one boy. Okay. So here who will be affected with disease is this boy because he has only one X chromosome. There is nothing else for him to get. Okay, so he will be affected. And what about this girl? That girl would be a carrier. Just remember one basic concept. Why in X-linked recessive, always the men are affected? Because for a male zygote to be formed, X is always transmitted from mother. Y is always from the father. Because it is X-linked, Invariably, like half of the sons will get this defective gene. Okay. Now, if you ask me why men cannot transmit the gene to men. Okay. So why in X-linked recessive, if the father is affected, he will not give the gene to his sons. He will only give to the daughters. Why is it like me? If, if this is the condition where the father has a disease, X-linked recessive, and this is a girl and this is a son, for example, just remember the basic concept, the girl will get the gene, one X, one X from the mother and the other X from the father. But here what is happening for a male child, he can only get Y from the father and X from the mother. Okay, so remember boys will get X chromosome from their mother and Y chromosome from the father. But in case of daughters, one X from the mother and one X from the father, that is the reason daughters can get a defective gene from the father, but sons will never have a uh, transmission from here. Okay. And also, uh, I want to tell you one more thing. In case of, you can think like X-linked recessive, usually the girls are not affected because they have one more gene. But in case of, Turners. Okay, if they get the X-linked recessive, they will present as disease. I'm talking about X-linked recessive. They can still present as disease. Okay, so I hope I am clear. So let's move back to our initial presentation about X-linked recessive in health. Okay, so a single recessive gene on X chromosome will cause the disease. As we know that affected males cannot transmit the condition to their sons because they give Y chromosome to their sons and defective X chromosome is given from the mother only. So again, this is one of the extinct recessive inheritance which we have already discussed. Remember, the fathers cannot transmit the disease to son. Males are affected, much more likely to be affected than girls because they have only one X chromosome. Okay, so it is the same thing here, what we had discussed before. So you can see the father is sick, okay and mother is carrier. This is another example. Okay, let's take this again. So, because here there's a possibility a girl also can affect, get affected. Okay, this is an, another example where a condition where, for example, hemophilia. Okay, the father is affected already and mother is also carrier. So, what can happen in the permutation and combination? So, it can be X dash, X dash. Okay. It can be X dash X. Okay. It can be X dash Y. And it can be X Y. Okay. So here you can see because it is the father is affected and mother is carrier. You can see both the, uh, like you can see the daughter has both defective genes. Obviously she will be affected. Okay, this is one scenario where girls can be affected. And also one boy would be definitely affected because he's having a defective gene and this girl will be a carrier. And of course, this boy will be normal. So one out of four are, if you want to talk about the daughters, yes, two out of, uh, like half of them would be affected, half of them would be carriers. The boy, half of them would be normal, half of them would be affected. Okay, because it is excellent. Okay, so don't worry if you're getting confused when we do the scenarios, you will definitely understand that. Now, some of the examples of X-linked recessive. As I said, mnemonics you can use 
in ethane. If you can remember without mnemonics, that's wonderful. But if you cannot, you can take help of these. Both father had a beautiful gold watch. So gluten cyclo a gamma globulinemia. Usually this is, this is not asked. Hemophilia is asked. Hunter's disease, G6PD. This is one of the things which I was trying to tell. Uh, all the metabolic disorders are X-linked recessive. So if you remember G6PD, it is X-linked, okay? Albinism, ocular albinism, Dutch and muscular dystrophies, and Ellen syndrome, okay? So you need to remember this. So put it on your revision wall so that you will remember. Now, now let's move to the X-linked dominant. X-linked dominant, again, it will, because it is dominant, it doesn't skip any generation. And father to son transmission, is again not possible here because we know that father can give only Y chromosome. And also, uh, then you can see that X thing dominant, the girls are majorly affected. I will show you how to draw an X thing dominant. Okay. Just bear with me. If you think it is very confusing, when we do the questions, you will understand. Okay. So X thing dominant. Okay. X thing dominant, what is happening? You can see X thing dominant. For example, this is an affected mother. And let's take the common example of father being affected. Okay. The mother is normal, father is affected. What okay. is happening? So you can see the permutation combination XX dash, XY, XX dash, and XY. Okay. Here you can see two daughters carry this defective gene as father cannot give to the son, so they are normal. Now, because this is excellent dominant, all daughters are affected. Because it is a dominant gene, irrespective of this, they are going to present with disease. So all the daughters will be affected and all the sons will be normal. Because you know the sex chromosome, X chromosome is given only from the mother for the sons. Okay. So that is what the similar example given here. You can see here the healthy father and sick mother. Again, uh, this is one such example where you can actually see even if the mother has the disease definitely uh, you can see this is the other way around okay x y x dash so you can see x x dash x y x dash y sorry let me go back this is the other way around okay so the example given here is mother is sick okay x dash x and healthy father. Okay, X, Y. So what are the permutation combination we will get? X dash X, X dash Y, X, X, and X, Y. Okay, here you can see these two people are affected and these two people are normal. So because this is autosomal dominant, I mean, sorry, X-link dominant, so one girl and one uh, son would be affected, the other daughter and the other son will be normal. That is what is sick is 50%, health is 50%. So this is what? it depicts okay so again some of the example fragile x syndrome and uh, actually red syndrome and uh, vitamin d resistant rickets so you need to remember this okay so that finishes our inheritance let's see how to apply this for the questions okay so the first question is a pregnant woman attends the antenatal clinic with a family history of genetic tests have been performed on her and her partner that have revealed they both are carriers of cystic fibrosis. So what is the inheritance of cystic fibrosis? It is autosomal recessive. Okay. Both carriers of the most common mutation associated with cystic fibrosis, the Delta F508 mutation. Women and her partner have some questions which they come to you in the clinic. Which of the answer from the list is most appropriate? So the thing is, these two people, the husband and wife are like they are carriers of cystic fibrosis. So they have a couple of questions to ask you. Okay, so you have to tell the cumulative probability. Here they are asking if the child is unaffected. What is the chance of her having an affected child in her next pregnancy? First of all, let's see what do they understand. Okay, what do they mean is this father, okay, this uh, couple, okay, sorry, this couple, they are actually have these both are carriers. He is carrier and she is carrier. They want to know what will happen to their children. They will say, okay, this pregnancy, one child is not affected. In my next pregnancy, what is the probability that my child will be affected? They would want to know. First of all, let's calculate 
how to uh, tell them what is the probability of having an affected or unaffected cell. Okay, because this is, we know cystic fibrosis is autosomal recessive. Now we know this condition that both the parents are carriers. Okay, so what is the permutation combination as we know to calculate? This is the permutation combination which can happen. So, so the answer here is we know that one fourth of the child is affected. This is autosomal. That is why I have written X4. Okay, uh, one fourth will be affected, one fourth will be normal, half of them would be carrier. Just remember one thing there is a possibility that with each pregnancy, the possibility of child getting affected is one by four, the child not being affected is one by four, and the probability of carrier being half. Okay, so let's see what is her doubt. Okay, so what is she asking here is, okay, sorry, I came to the question. Okay, so if that, if this, child, for example, whatever the pregnancy like she is having now, that is if it is unaffected, what is my chance of having an unaffected child in my next pregnancy? So the options are one in two, one in four, one in eight, one in 12, one in 25. Okay, so as we know that each pregnancy, the probability of having an unaffected child is 1 in 4 and the probability of having an affected child is also 1 in 4. So the correct answer is 1 in 4 which is option B. Okay, hope I'm clear with this. Next, she is again asking, the same couple is asking what is the chance of her having an affected son? So as we have already discussed here, the probability of having a son is for having an affected son. Okay, here there is a twist because you here you have to calculate. They are not asking if you see the previous question. Sorry, let me go back to the previous previous one. They are asking what is the probability of having an affected child? Sorry. They are asking what is the probability of having an affected child? They didn't mention boy or girl. Okay, so this is very important again to uh, understand if they are asking affected boy or a girl, again it changes, but they are asking affected child. If they are not mentioning the sex, of course we know it is 1 by 4 is the risk which you have to calculate. Now in the next question, they are asking very specifically, okay, what is the chance of her having an affected son? So this needs a calculation. So let's go back to our own presentation. So this says what we know that one fourth of the child can be affected. So let's keep it there and let's calculate what is the probability of her having a son. Okay. So for all practical purpose, you have to calculate the probability of having son. Okay. Because this is a girl, uh, this is a woman and this is the uh, father. So what is the probability? XX, XY. Again, uh, x x x y x x x y okay so what is the probability of having a son you know that out of four kids two can be son and two can be daughters right so the probability of having a daughter is two by four the probability of having a son is two by four now again i want to repeat they are asking here the probability of having an affected son so we know now you have to calculate the probability of cumulative probability of her having an affected son. So first of all, let's see what is the chance of her having an affected child is one by four, which we have seen here, right? This is the because they are both carrier. The probability of having an affected child is one by four. Okay. Now, what is the probability of them having a son in the first place? Okay. So their chance of having a son is two by four. So 1 by 4 into 2 by 4 is equal to 1 by 8. This is the cumulative probability. Okay. So whenever you get a question like this, son or daughter, first of all, you need to see first, according to their situation, what is the chance of having an affected child or unaffected child that you have to calculate and probability of them having a son or a daughter. Okay. So let's see whether we are right or wrong. So this was the question the same carrier couple they are coming to you to ask what is the chance of having an affected son they didn't ask affected child if affected child it is still one in four they are specifically asking what is the chance of them having an affected son so it means the cumulative probability which we calculated one by four child can be affected 
and also the probability of having sun is 1 by 2 into 2 by 4 that is half you can say so 1 by 8 child would be affected. okay hope i am clear with that now what is the chance of her child will be a cystic carrier see again her child is what they are telling they never said about uh, the they never said a daughter or a son okay so this we have already calculated we know that the chances of being a carrier is 50 percent that is one in two don't tell 50 percent or 25 percent because you have to go into the options given so one in two is 50 percent one in four is 25 percent so you have to go for one in two okay again the same pedigree which we already have calculated both the parents are carriers right we know that the couple is a carrier couple the mother and father they carry the defective gene so the probability of affecting having an affected child is one in four the having a child with carrier is one in eight and again having a child which is normal is one in four again if they ask male and female that is when you should go for the final detail thing okay i hope i am clear with that wonderful so let's see the other example the next example is let's read out this option a woman has a brother affected by hemophilia a woman has a brother who is already affected by hemophilia a okay so this woman has come to you and she says that she has a brother affected by hemophilia we know hemophilia is x-linked recessive and comes to see you to discuss the implication of this as she's planning a pregnancy which of the answer from the list is most appropriate so now the thing is this woman has come her brother is affected now she's asking a couple of questions what is the chance of her having an unaffected son so first of all let's understand her scenario first okay so here what has happened is so a couple has come to you okay she has come to you and she is telling in her family this is the for example this is the girl in question this is the woman's family she says that in her family her brother is affected okay now the same girl has come to you with a husband to, uh, or she has come to you telling to understand what is the probability of her having an i think it was unaffected son right unaffected son from hemophilia okay so here there are a couple of things which you need to calculate first of all you need to understand what is the probability of her being a carrier okay so you only know that you only know that she has a brother who is affected by hemophilia let's see calculate her probability all these questions you should always think of cumulative probability so you can ask me what if she is not a carrier if she is not a carrier the question never comes on you if she is not a carrier then there is no problem but in your counseling you should always uh, actually tell the both the things okay if she is not a carrier then there is no problem but what if she is carrier okay so first let's calculate this woman's pedigree chart okay this woman's family pedigree chart we know hemophilia is x linked recessive so for that her mother should be carrier father should be normal okay so this is we are calculating this woman in question who has come to talk to you okay so now so this is the brother who is already affected by hemophilia okay now now we have to see what is her probability of being a carrier of course we can't take this person in picture because it is xy so what is the probability of her being carrier is out of two daughters one can be carrier agreed so we are calculating this woman in question's family this woman who has come to you that her brother is being affected so we are calculating her chances of carrier being carrier that is the first thing which you have to calculate okay her chance of being carrier is one in two because her brother is already affected and this we are not interested so out of the two daughters her probability is one in two okay let's keep it at that and then again again we need to calculate okay probability of her having a son again we know that probability of her having a son is one by two all right so her probability of having a son is half okay probability of having a son okay ah and now the next thing is what is the probability of her having an unaffected son okay if she seems to be a carrier what is the probability of her having an unaffected son so let's calculate that quickly okay so what is the probability of her having an unaffected son means 
If she has two sons, then one son can be unaffected. So one by two. So let's combine all of these okay, and calculate the cumulative probability. So a girl who is a woman who is coming to you to ask about what is the cumulative probability of her having an unaffected son when her carrier status is not known. So we have to say that her uh, this is a cumulative probability which we are telling this woman chance of being carrier is half. Okay, this is what we calculated being half and probability of her having a son, which we have discussed last time, that is again half. Okay, and then the chances of having an unaffected son. We know this son is unaffected. Out of two sons, one will be affected, one will not be affected. So that is again half. So the cumulative probability of this woman having an unaffected son is one in eight. Okay, so whenever you get a question like this, you should always calculate the cumulative probability. Okay, so the answer is one in eight. Okay, so again, you have to look into the options given. The C is the correct answer. So this woman, you can say that her probability of having a son who is not affected by hemophilia is one in eight. Now let's see what is the chance of her having daughter who is a carrier. Okay. Again, you have to calculate in a similar way which we calculated before. Okay. So the similar way of having it calculating for a daughter. Now we know her chance of having carrier is half. Her chance of being carrier. This woman chance of being carrier is half, and chance of being uh, getting a daughter is half. And here you can see one out of two daughter will be affected or one of two daughter will not be affected. So because this is a, sorry, this is a carrier, X-linked carrier. So you can see one of the two daughters will be carriers. So they are asking a daughter who can be a carrier. So again, this is one by two. So the cumulative probability is one by eight. Okay, so her probability of having a daughter who is carrier is one by two. Probability of having a daughter is again one by two. Her chance of being carrier is R. Okay, so that that is uh, one of the most important things which is which you have to remember and go for a cumulative problem. Let's see whether we are right or not. Okay, what is the chance of her daughter having a daughter who is a carrier? Our answer is C one in eight. Let's see what is the answer. Okay, it is correct. C one in eight, as I said, affected brother. So her chance of being carrier is R, and probability of having a daughter is two by four or one by two, and then probability of a carrier is one by two again. Probability of daughter being carrier, you can see here. Okay. Now, what is the chance of her being carrier? This we already calculated, right? Her chance of being carrier is one in two. Okay. Her chance of being carrier is one in two. You can see only this part. Okay, only they are asking what is the chance of this woman being carrier. So this is just don't read this. This is the one which you have to read. So what is the chance of this woman being carrier? This is the brother who is affected, and this is the daughter. So one in two is the probability that she can be affected. Okay, and she can be a carrier. Now, what is the chance of her brother having an affected son? As we have discussed for this, you don't need any calculation. X-linked recessive in men will not transmit the disease to their sons. They will only transmit the disease to daughters because you can see from a father, Y chromosome only can go to the son. X will be coming from the mother. Here for the daughter, one X from the father, one X from the mother. So that is the reason the brother, her brother who is already affected by hemophilia he, her, his chance of having an affected son would be zero, okay, unless his partner has some problem, okay. So the brother transmitting the disease chances is absolutely nil, zero, because they cannot give X chromosome, okay. So that's it about today's inheritance. I think I have made a little bit of a concept clear and simple for you guys. So remember one thing. Uh, whenever you get these things, if they are asking for a child in case of X linked, it's you, can, you need not calculate the cumulative probability. But if they are asking male or female, you might have to look into the probability. Okay, so hope this is helpful. Hope you guys like this. And do let me know if you uh, like this and let me know 
uh, any other topics which you are looking for. This. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you everybody. Stay safe and take care of yourself and your family. Thank you so much. God bless.